Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. I'm Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson Number 10, The Truth About Graphs. Before we get into the lesson, let me remind you that you can find the worksheet and a homework set that go along with this video by clicking on the video's description or by visiting our website at www.emathinstruction.com. As well, don't forget, at the top of every one of our worksheets, we've got a QR code. Scan that with your phone or your tablet. Come right to this video. All right, let's get into it. It is exceptionally important to understand the following truth about graphs, and whether that's the graph of an equation or the graph of an inequality doesn't matter. All right, but take a look at these two points because they are critical. Any coordinate pair, x, y, that makes the equation or inequality true lies on its graph. It's that plain or simple. And the graph, the entire graph, is simply the collection of all the x, y pairs that make the equation or inequality true. So it's really simple, and it's one of the things I think that drives math teachers the craziest. So if you want to get underneath our skins, hey, this is how to do it, right? You know, everyone can make a graphing error here and there, now and again. But the plain fact is, ultimately speaking, you should know whether any point lies on the graph of an equation by simply checking to see if the equation is true. So today, we're really going to be getting into that idea and playing around with it, as well as learning about what are known as systems of equations and inequalities. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Consider the linear equation y equals 4x plus 2. Letter A, does the point 2, 10 lie on the graph of this equation? Justify your answer. All right, well, it's really this simple. This point lies on the equation if it makes the equation true. So I'm going to see if it makes the equation true. I'm going to put 10 in for y, and I'm going to put 2 in for x. Right? I remember my order of operations. This multiplication comes first. So 4 times 2 is 8. And 10 equals 10. So the answer is yes. Because this is true. Right? Why don't you go ahead, pause the video now, and see if the point negative 1, 4 lies on, this, on, the, on the graph of this equation. All right, let's do it. Um, we're going to put 4 in for y. We're going to put negative 1 in for x. We'll get 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 4 equals negative 2. Well, that is certainly false. And therefore, no, it does not lie on the graph of this linear equation. All right, absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. If I give you any point and any equation, whether it's linear or not, and I say, does this point lie on the graph of this equation? It's simply a question of true and false. That's why we, we, we named the lesson the way that we named it. All right, the ugly truth mm -hmm. about graphs. All right, let's clear this out and keep going. All right, exercise two. The equation y equals 2x squared minus x plus 5 describes a parabola. We're going to get into these a lot in later units. Does the point 3, 20 lie in its graph? Justify how you found its answer, how you found your answer. So pause the video now and try to figure out whether this point lies on the graph of that parabola. Okay, let's go through it. It's as simple as this. Does that point when substituted into the equation, make the equation true. All right, well, let's put 20 in for y. Let's put 3 in for x. Now, very important to remember your order of, whoops, that was weird. Very important to remember your order of operations. All right, exponents come first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change that three squared into a nine. All right, after exponents come multiplication. So two times nine is 18. And now that we've just got addition and subtraction left, we, move, we work it from left to right. 18 minus three is 15. 
and 20 equals 20. That is true, true, true. So that means that yes, it does lie on the graph. We may have no idea what the graph of this parabola looks like. In fact, we probably don't. But what we do know is it passes through the point 3 comma 20. Okay? I think it's a pretty easy idea, really. True means it's on the graph. False means it's not. Okay, I'm going to clear this out. Copy down what you need to. Okay, here it goes. Let's keep going. Exercise three. We can also do this for inequalities. All right, we're going to work on graphing inequalities in upcoming lessons. So it's good to know whether or not points should be graphed in the inequality, right? So for, for letter A, right, does 4 comma 1 lie on the graph of this inequality? Well, let's check it. We put 1 in for Y. We put 4 in for X. We remember our order of operations, right? And we find 1 is greater than 3. Well, that is clearly false. 1 is not greater than 3. So no, that point does not lie on the graph of that inequality. Whatever the graph of an inequality looks like, that point doesn't lie on it. Okay? So do this for me. Take some time. Pause the video. I think you can take up to 5, 10 minutes, whatever you need and try to figure out whether those points in B, C, or D, and D, lie on the graphs of those inequalities, okay? All right, let's go through them. Does the point 2, comma 8 lie on the inequality x plus y is less than or equal to 10? Well, let's do it. 2 plus 8, less than or equal to 10. 10, less than or equal to 10? Yeah, that's true. It's true because of that equal sign. So the answer is yes. Ooh, watch out for this one. We got a little x squared going on here. So 2 is less than negative 3 squared minus 4. Have to be very careful here. Negative 3 squared, right, is negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. So 2 is less than 9 minus 4. 2 is less than 5. Yeah, that's true. Right? So the answer is yes. It does lie in that inequality. All right, one more. Let's put negative 1 in for y. That'll greater than or equal to negative 6 plus 12 divided by 3. Nothing that we're going to do on this side. Leave it alone. Negative 6 plus 12 is positive 6 divided by 3. And negative 1 is greater than or equal to 2. Well, that's clearly no. And therefore, sorry, it's clearly false. And then that gives us no. All right. So really, this is fairly easy, right? We will always know whether any given point lies on the graph of an equation or an inequality by whether or not it makes that inequality or equation true or false. Okay, so now we're actually going to go on. Let me clear the text. So before I go on, let me pause for a minute, give you a chance to write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to clear out the text. So now what we're going to actually do, because that's a very, very simple idea, is we're going to move on and we're going to introduce you for the first time to what's known as a system of equation. So systems of equation. Now, all a system of equations is, is a collection of two or more equations, but in this course we're just going to be working with two, but it's a collection of two or more equations, or more equations, joined by the AND truth condition. Now remember, the AND condition is only true, so we've looked at this before, when all of its components are true. All right? So the solution set of a system is the collection of all points that result in all equations or inequalities being true. All right? So if I give you a point and I say, is this a solution to this system? 
can't just make one of the two equations true. It's got to make them all true. Okay, and we're going to work with systems a lot. In fact, the next unit, that's all it's about. It's just called systems of equations and systems of inequalities. But for right now, we just want to introduce the idea in terms of things being true and false. So I'm going to clear this out, and then we're going to get a little work with it. Okay. Hello. There it clears. Took a little bit. Three tries, but we got it. Okay. Determine if the point 3, 1 is a solution to the system of equations shown below. Justify your work. Okay. Now, I've got the word and here, but almost always with systems of equations, this word will not be included. But it's kind of nice that it's included right now. Let's check to see if the first equation is true. Is 1 equal to 2 times 3 minus 5? So this is the first equation, right? Order of operations, do that multiplication first. 1 equals 1. So that's true. So that's for the equation y equals 2x minus 5. Let's now work it out for y equals negative 4x plus 13. Let's see, I want to put 1 in for y, 3 in for x. I'll get 1 equals negative 12 plus 13, and 1 equals 1. That's also true. And because they're both true, the answer is yes. But they all have to be true. A point has to simultaneously make all equations true. Okay? That is a very important exercise. We're going to come back to it again and again and again. So write down anything you need to, pause the video, and then we're moving on. Okay, let's do it. Exercise 5. Does the point 5, 15 lie in the solution set to the system of inequalities shown below? doesn't matter whether it's a system of equations or a system of inequalities. It's got to make them all true. So why don't you pause the video now and see if, it may, if, if that point lies in the solution set to that system. All right, let's go through it. Let's start with the first one y is greater than or equal to 4x minus 7. Putting in 15 for y. Oops, where'd that equal sign come from? That was weird. Greater than or equal to 4 times 5 minus 7. 15 is greater than or equal to 20 minus 7. 15 is greater than or equal to 13. Well, that's true. So, so far, so good. Then we'll do y is less than x squared minus 10. So we'll put 15 in for y, 5 in for x, 15 is less than 25 minus 10, 15 is less than 15. Ooh, close, but definitely false, right? 15 isn't less than 15, it's equal to 15. So, because these two are really joined with and, and and will be false if any part of it is false, this is overall false, which means no. Not part of that solution set. Okay? Again, not a hard idea. Everything's got to be true to be part of that solution set. All right, I'm going to clear it out. Okay, we can even mix inequalities and equalities, because quite frankly, it's not about equality or inequality. What it's about is true and false. So let's see if this point is a solution to the system shown below. All right, pause the video and see if you can figure that out. All right, let's go through it. Again, we can be very systematic about it. Let's start with y is greater than 4 minus x divided by 2. Uh, putting in 5 for y. Be very careful. x is negative 2, so we've got that subtraction of a negative going on. So 5 is greater than 4 plus 2 is 6, right? So anytime we have the two negatives, we get a positive. 
And of course, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Is 5 greater than 3? Sure it is. That's true. All right, now let's go with the equation. y equals 3x plus 11. And so we put 5 in for y and negative 2 in for x. So we'll get 5 equals negative 6 plus 11 and 5 equals 5. That's also true. Therefore, overall, we've got a true and therefore the answer is yes. It's a lot of work to get the answer yes, but it's the way you do it. The other way you do it is you graph the two, all right? But given that we haven't seen how to graph inequalities yet, that's a little bit tricky, even though we should be able to graph y equals 3x plus 11. All right, so let me clear this out. Pause the video now if you need to. All right, and let's move on. So today, we actually saw one of the most important things in all of mathematics, which is simply, what does it mean for a point to lie on a graph of an equation? And it's really this simple, right? A point lies on the graph of an equation or an inequality if it makes that equation or inequality true, and it doesn't if it doesn't. We then also introduced the idea of a system of equations, or a system of equality, inequalities, or even a mixed system. Right? And the idea there is that a point will be part of the solution set to a system if it makes all the equations or all the inequalities true. And that's it. We're going to revisit all these topics. For now, thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. And until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.